You've got two empty halves of coconut and you're banging them together. Oh, Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayst blow thine enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. You must cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. We have found the witch. Might we burn her? Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Deputy Rogers Neighborhood Training. This week we are going to finish up the West Falmouth uh, area, the West Falmouth District. We're going to cover the southern portion of Station 4's district, that area in which um, headquarters provides the second due uh, services, rescue and the second due engine. And that's the area primarily below Chappaquoit uh, Road on down to uh, Wishing Moon Hill, uh, Brayside Drive area. Um, this uh, Google map here, I just want to uh, go real quick, just kind of gives us a quick overview of the area that we're talking about um, as far as the basic um, geography here um, and just a little bit of knowledge uh, here uh, although we don't go out there too often this area here is the Great Sipawissett Marsh we've covered before Drift Road off of uh, Black Beach Road and we have the bike path that runs through here So that's Great Sipawissa Marsh. We don't go too often in the bike path. It runs uh, down through the center of it. And uh, of course 28A. And this area here, the reason I wanted to point this out, is this area here between the Great Sipawissa Marsh and the what they call the Little Sipawissa Marsh, which is Woodneck Beach down over here. This uh, neck of land is uh, Sacanesset Hills. Um, and it is bisected by the uh, current bicycle path. And then also Station 4's district also covers a good portion of the Long Pond uh, Forest or the Long Pond Reservoir, the town forest around that um, section there. But that's just to give us a little overview of where we're going. And first of all, we will kind of look at this. Uh, we kind of looked at it previously, uh, but we will just touch on it again just so we know the separation here. Um, this being Chappaquoy Road right up uh, top. And this is, um, ah, here we go, right up here. It's West Falmouth Highway, um, and they have the um, condominiums right next door, um, just down the street from Station 4, and also the first uh, house right in there. Um, but that dividing line, as we mentioned before, runs up Fraser Road and Lindsley Road and then up uh, Telegraph Hill Road. And um, these houses here, of course, are on Telegraph Hill and they will be changed over um, to include in that area there. But uh, the first roads we want to touch on when we come down 28A is Fraser Road. And uh, Fraser Road here uh, goes up a hill pretty good. Um, and 
right in here it breaks off. Frazier goes to the left and goes through the blacksmith shop and this section here starts out as Fairway Lane. Believe it or not, back in the late 1800s uh, up until I believe probably the um, just after the depression this area here was a golf course. Um, you hard to believe because of the topography up there. You, it's uh, pretty rocky and hilly up there, but that's where we get the name Fairway Lane in T-Way, off of Fairway. Um, and of course it's bounded by uh, Route 28 um, behind there. And we'll see, I, I want to point out two uh, houses up here that, uh, the other thing I want to point out here is Seabreeze Lane just down the street from Station 4. It's a very small road, hard to see the sign. There's two houses up here with a hydrant. Uh, on the map, it shows the road goes through, and not too many years ago, it did go through. But I can tell you, I'm trying to get through there now. This house up here, they've done some construction to, and over the years have obliterated this portion of the road. Uh, so it's no longer passable. There's only... Uh, I believe one house, one or two houses up in here, but it's very narrow. You get the engine up there with the ambulance, and that's about it. Um, but I want to point out this house and this house here. As you can see, in relation to the sizes of the other houses, um, these houses are probably two or three times the size, and indeed they are. This is a 8,000 square foot house built in the late 1800s that was the clubhouse um, to the golf course. And currently it is a single family homestead, but it is um, uh, pretty large and you can see it from the road. Hopefully we won't have any uh, fire issues there, but I did talk to the owner and was able to get a quick uh, photograph of the house. And we'll zoom out a little bit. But it is of typical of a lot of places in Falmouth that were built in the late 1800s, whether it's down in Quisset or anything on the western shore, is this kind of shingle style um, house here. And so we have a three story uh, shingle style house uh, with a garage, a two car garage over to the uh, left. And this house here, we can see as we drive down 28A, and we can see from the bike path. Um, but like I said, it used to be an old clubhouse, and now it's this, uh, this pretty large place here. Uh, the other, the kind of quote-unquote sister house to this, these were all built the same time as like the Emerson house. Um, these places, a lot of places down Woods Hole, the folks came to town, they had some money, and at the time there weren't um, many trees, believe it or not, in Falmouth, all the, the lumber had been cut down, so forth, so when they put these houses up on these hills, these folks with some, some big money um, in the late 1800s, they put them up there and had fantastic views all the way around, most of them still do. Um, but this is another one, another house, uh, just been re redone um, by Newton Builders, and it's probably just about the same size. So those are the two uh, houses that we can see. This one's the one on, uh, they're actually both on Fraser Road, but this is the one closer to Station 4 and the other one's... Um, just right off of Fraser, so that's uh, here. Okay, let's see if we can shoot in here. You only mentioned it just because you could see these places, and if anything ever did happen, we would know how to get into them. Um, this is that old clubhouse property, and this is that other house that's just been redone. And we can get to this place right from. Blacksmith Shop Road has to be the quickest way for West Falmouth coming up for Station 4 to come in to get to this house here. Um, but as we mentioned before, Frazier goes through, Lindsley here does not. 
um, used to, but it's all grown in. So, all right, and uh, so we'll move down from there, and right there between Seabreeze and Fraser is a very small uh, lane called Cottage Lane, and it has just a few houses on it here, and it just looks like a little path, but it does have a couple of uh, houses on it, and the bike path runs across here, so it would be a way uh, to pick up someone off of the bike path. Of course, Chappaquoy Road would be just as easy down the street. All right, and as we travel down uh, southerly on 28A, West Falmouth Highway, we come to Caitlin Hills Road, a fairly new development, I believe, put in in the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, probably about a 20 house uh, development there. We did have a brush fire back a couple of years ago, uh, left an unattended fire that um, one of these houses here, the way the wind was blowing, the southwest breeze blew it up into these houses here. And these folks here got uh, a little nervous because the fire was whipping up into there, but it caught this area here. Um, and this area here is just a um, kind of a set aside conservation piece of property for this um, development here, so it'll never be built on. All right, and let's see. We go down 28A. We'll refresh this map here. And while we're at it, we will get rid of this uh, colors here. Uh, just give me a second here. Let this map fill in. There we go. And let me get rid of these district colors here. Uh, okay. We don't need the uh, we don't need the colors anymore. And I added those features here um, onto the map just to give us an uh, idea as well. Uh, here we go. Okay. Now, of course, this is the uh, Brick Hill Road uh, intersection up here. And we do cover, West Falmouth does cover uh, this area here. And this road up here, which is Indian Mound Road. Uh, has a few houses up in there and this piece of property up in here um, I believe it's the uh, Garfield Arthur lives up in here and these roads are a little tight to get up to this house here one thing I, I do want to mention while we are while we're looking at these at this area in I want us to all be aware of is that Route 28A used to be the old highway running from the center of Falmouth all the way up to the canal. It's existed for a long time. Now it's called Route 28A and not Route 28. But it's an older road. This whole section along Route 28A is a historic district. So we will continue to find um, historic and antique houses up and down this whole section. So that is something we have to keep aware of, for not only for fire, but for rescue. A little tough to get people down some of those narrow, narrow stairways um, and hallways. But also the eastern side of West Falmouth Highway, we get into the moraine, and within 50 feet off of the highway, we start rising up, um, probably 30 or 40 feet. And as we mentioned before, it gives us drop-offs to different houses from one story down to three. But the other thing it does that we need to be cognizant of is uh, hydrant flows. Now, we have a few hydrant flows um, right at the base of the hills, like this one here, that shows about uh, 1,200 gallons a minute. Um, I've looked over these maps quite extensively, and I haven't been able to find uh, flows like 
for uh, this hydrant up here. I haven't been able to find fire flows up on these uh, the ridges of these uh, of these places. So I would bet that they're probably in the 800, the 500 to 800 gallon uh, range. And some of the older mains, like on Fairway or um, Viewcrest, might even be um, you know in the 500 800 range so that we need to be cognizant of the uh, the elevation and the terrain it gives us problems and right across from here this looks like a large house but when we drive by we know it's a single story kind of a ranch type house this section here is a, a three car garage uh, this house this road here used to be connected up to Little Neck Bars Road and in fact it does run along here and not too long ago it used to be called Little Neck Bars I believe extension and so forth but uh, since then they since then they have renumbered these houses to show uh, addresses off Route 28A so if we're looking at for 436 West Falmouth Highway um, the Bedell's uh, house down here in the end we've got to come in this little road right across some brick kiln uh, and once again the bike path is there and there's a uh, pathway connecting the two of them uh, we come down right by the this is the Chapel Goy Grill West Falmouth Post Office complex and we have uh, Bowman Lane and uh, Quahog Pond Lane that run up in here okay and now let's run the map up a little bit and that the the West Falmouth uh, post office in Chapel Creek Grill complex uh, there also have a building to the rear that is a th apartments they have about three uh, three or four apartments in there um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention here in the last uh, discussion of West Falmouth and um, the northern section of, of uh, 28A is we talked a lot about the zoning and being historic but we also talked a lot about business zoning and also about condo zoning this section of West Falmouth um, West Falmouth Highway 28A and West Falmouth in general the only business zoning in this section is the West Falmouth post office uh, in the Chappaquoit Grill so as far as there being and he, like in the other section, we had different businesses, different stores. This section here is predominantly single-family dwelling, predominantly all residential. Um, there's a couple of buildings that have apartments, and this uh, post office square is one of them. The other is uh, further down with the junction of Old Palmer Avenue. So just keep that in mind. When we're, we're responding there, we, we should have enough figure inside of our head. Okay, is it south of West Falmouth? Is it in that, that other second due district? Okay, good. There should be single family houses. Uh, it shouldn't be a business complex there. Okay. Uh, we have right near the uh, post office complex, we get into Viewcrest Drive. And they call it View Crest because at the crest of the hill, you get a really great view of uh, Buzzards Bay. And most of these houses have been designed to, uh, each of them have been faced and, and built so you can take advantage of the uh, view. And we do have a picture of a couple of... Uh, is, let's see I believe this is one here okay yep yeah telephone lines yeah that's a good one all right okay uh, this is going up Viewcrest just kind of gives us an idea uh, I'm sure everybody's been up there one time or another but if you haven't 
You'll see most of the houses on Viewcrest are uh, two-story, single-family houses. They've all been uh, faced and opened up to have uh, nice patios and uh, windows to look over uh, Buzzards Bay. And the other one I wanted to point out here was a house that I've seen um, on Viewcrest for many years going up and down. I've never seen anybody live in it, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's abandoned, but uh, it's certainly overgrown, and I haven't seen any real care to the place. Um, I believe it's the second house up on the right. Uh, maybe some of the guys that know West Falmouth uh, really real well, like uh, Greg or Bobby or um, Todd might be able to tell you a little bit more about this house here, but for all the poof, 10 years or 15 years I know, I've never really seen um, much care to that, that house there. Doesn't look like anybody's living in it. Okay, so that's uh, Viewcrest and Grouse and Quail right at the top. Quail goes across from uh, Viewcrest to Grouse. And as we go down 28A, the next development we come to is uh, Hawks Way. Relatively new development within probably the past 15 years. Most of the houses up there are very well constructed in the 2,000 square foot uh, range. And also Quanon Way is this uh, cul-de-sac off of that. And in uh, this new development, we have hydrant flows of 980 and 860 gallons. Those are new mains, probably uh, freshly opened as well. Uh, I wanted to touch briefly, I mentioned about Quahog Pond Lane before, but I didn't show how it went across the bike path from uh, Bowman Lane next to the post office and the Chappy Grill goes across here and has these houses here on this little neck of land. It does cross over the bike path and it's very good access right here. Um, but they are kind of stuck back in the woods and that's one of the other things you'll notice here is a lot of houses with uh, long driveways and folks like to get back uh, off of the road as you see here these places here. Okay, so we were talking about these houses here that are way off the road. Um, and just have to bear that in mind. Uh, and one of the other houses, uh, roads as we head south here is Blair Lane. Uh, Blair Lane goes up little hill and splits off to the right is Bla uh, Blair and to the left is Hibbs Lane. So Hibbs and Blair. Uh, some of these houses here, uh, I believe this one here, they're actually down in little gullies and stuff. These folks here, they don't have a really good view until you get to the top here. Uh, most of these houses are down some gullies looking at the topography. All uh, right, and we head down 28A. Keep working our way down. Move the map along here, and as we just uh, zoom out a little bit, we'll see the effect of the uh, marsh, the Great Sipworth Marsh over. Um, to the left, here's the, here's the bike path that goes right through the middle of it, but that's, uh, that's where we're looking at here. Okay. Um, next we want to look at uh, is uh, Garrison Road. Road's been there since, uh, I think it was put in like in the 50s or 60s. Pretty straightforward uh, cul-de-sac. Most of these houses, once again, a lot of these houses get views as well, just like Viewcrest um, Drive. And we hit Charles Lane. Uh, a few houses uh, down on Charles, 2468, probably 10 houses on Charles Lane of 28A. 
and um, mentioned vir Virtue Circle, a little cul-de-sac road here. Now across the street, we start getting uh, things get a little bit more uh, interesting and um, connected here. Old Homestead Road goes off of 28A. Now Old Homestead Road is just what its name implies. It implies to the old homestead of Falmouth. Uh, this right here, 55, is one of the most historic structures in the town of Falmouth. Um, in one that at the end here they actually have a gate and they um, you don't want to, too many folks knowing about it or going in there because of its uh, sensitive historic value. Um, this is the main uh, older house and this is a newer house there. This uh, called the uh, the Bowermans, which were one of the uh, first families, the first uh, European non-Native American family to be given a very large um, grant of land down uh, this section on the Cape uh, with the Bowermans and the Giffords. And this is, uh, this old homestead here was probably dates back to the mid 1600s so the latter part of the 1600s and uh, let's see if I can pull up a picture here um, okay all right there itself is the uh, the older house it's a uh, the old homestead it's got a uh, like a uh, they call a ship's bottom roof. It's kind of that, um, like a keel or the the ribs of a ship. It's kind of a rounded uh, type roof, and it is a, uh, I guess you'd say a, sh a shingle style uh, house. Else, obviously, if we can, if hopefully there'll never be a fire there, but if there is, we can do as much as we can um, to divide the building and to. Uh, push the fire from the unburned to the burned and keep it there because this is a once again it's a very historic uh, structure and the other is I believe the other picture I took here yep this is just a the picture as you're coming through the gate onto the property to the left is the uh, old homestead and to the right is this other um, kind of bungalow building um, on the property and then on this property itself there's kind of some storage sheds um, that are kind of old as well. Now just to be aware of that local uh, Falmouth history and hence the reason why there is uh, Bowerman's Lane, uh, the old homestead in the Bowerman's Lane you still go right through to the Bowerman's property and we also come down Bowerman's and uh, we can turn here uh, left on the Bob White. Now approximately right in here they have a gate to shut off. Uh, to, it divides Bob, uh, Bob White. So as far as the dispatchers and our own response need to be concerned, um, we do need to remember that there is a gate here. We can cut through it, but obviously it's going to take some time. Um, and that wraps that up. Now we will continue down uh, this intersection here where West Falmouth Highway divides off. This is Old Palmer Ave, and this is uh, Route 28. Now. Just while we're talking there real briefly, uh, it has caused some confusion over the years, is that we all think, well, that's the end of West Falmouth Highway right here. And this 230 uh, is an older home that's been broken up into uh, little apartments. 
and I will uh, we'll talk briefly about that. Um, let's see. Okay, why don't we look at? Uh, let's look at this. This is uh, I believe this should be yeah this should be two thirty. Um, Route twenty eight A West Falmouth Highway. As you, as you can see, it's a it looks like a single family home, pretty large place, but it's been cut up into different apartments. We can kind of, and we will see that in this photograph right here. We've talked about before the little clues uh, that we see for apartments, and here we go. Here's one of them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mailboxes. So luckily they are labeled. Is this the main entrance in to go to those six or seven apartments? I don't know. Um, but that is a clue that these uh, there is, you know, I wouldn't say six families in there, but you're talking about um, at least six apartments with one or two people in them. So we're talking a little bit more of a rescue and uh, fire potential than we had before. Uh, so, as I was mentioning before, uh, that we think a little bit of confusion that that's the end of West Falmouth Highway. We go from 230 down to 210. This is where it gets confusing because it says Old Palmer Ave. Okay? Now, this is where we get a little confusion here because 230, we're going to 210, 204. Okay, and then we come down here and we have 6, 12, and 18. Okay, Old Palmer Avenue. West Falmouth Highway, these are West Falmouth Highway addresses. And what they did is they ran them down because Route 28A, Old Palmer Ave actually used to be the uh, part of 28A. They, back when they built the highway, whatever they wanted to do, somebody decided this is how they were going to number it. So, even though this could be 28A, Palmer Ave, Old Palmer Ave could be 28A, it's not. So, these numbers end up right here, but then we go down this section. Of, whoops, okay, we go down this section of uh, Route 28, where it comes through uh, just across from Brayside Drive, and even though this these were never, uh, this was never part of West Falmouth Highway, this section that they, they actually cut in, um, the, what they call the bypass, or, you know, uh, the section between where the two highways merge into one down to the hospital lights, that these houses here were deemed to be West Falmouth Highway addresses. And it's not a road, it's just West Falmouth Highway addresses. 114, 118, 120, 122. So how do these end up with that? Somebody decided it. And even this here says West Falmouth Highway. Okay, so there's, uh, and even this house down here, there we go, even though it's not part of uh, Station 4's district, these ones over here are, uh, there we go, are uh, West Falmouth Highway addressed. Um, buildings right here. So just to add to our confusion, but one of the reasons we need to know our district well enough is to know these little uh, nuances of the district and they won't throw us if we're aware of it. Okay, uh, here are those little these roads here and I believe the reason why they got their numbers, not that it matters so much, is that this is Palmer Avenue, which of course used to be 
the highway or the road up, which should be called 28A. And you see this little piece of property right here. It fronts on Old Palm Rav, and it gives a little dog leg into this property here. But when they put in these houses, they wouldn't allow them to have a driveway off of here. Of course, it drops down pretty steeply here. So they wouldn't allow them to have uh, West Falmouth Highway addresses, um, or in this case, Old Palmer Avenue addresses. Uh, that's, that's where it came from. So just adds to our confusion. But anyway, then we have, um, kind of going backwards here, but I want to fill in quick, uh, Cashelot Lane. That's the uh, end of the district right here. This is the railroad bridge or the bike path bridge now uh, as it is. And the line for uh, Station 4's district, I won't bother flipping on it, but comes down right across the uh, marsh here, cuts across the marsh, cuts in here, and goes right across these houses here and across the town uh, reservoir. So these are all in Station 4's district. Brayside Drive uh, on the highway is um, in Station 4's district. And the quick little note about Brayside here, that if you come in Brayside and you turn right, these are all the lower numbers. Higher numbers are to the left. Um, all right, now we're kind of going backwards here. Uh, this in here is the Sipwistic Campgrounds. And uh, these are not obviously not roads, but uh, they are they may be used by the folks calling 911 as to where they uh, live. That's why they designate a little trailer or whatever might be on that property. So just they, there's something to pay attention to. Uh, and I want to point out uh, one, just the sign, obviously. Is, I'm sure everybody's seen the sign, so it's not a major uh, issue. But it's a sign that supports the campgrounds. As you enter the campground, there's a gate uh, right at the entrance. Oh, there we go. There's a gate, I believe, right in here. And it ends up, uh, there's a Knox box on the uh, gate. It gives us the key cards so we can gain uh, access to the uh, property. Okay. Now, I wanted to just break that up, and we're going to work now into uh, Sackanesset Hills. And uh, which is a little difficult to get a handle on. Um, I hope everybody has found one way or another to really dissect it. And as I go down it, I'll try to dissect it a little bit better. The way I remembered it and, and try to work my way through it is uh, dividing things up to be on one side of the railroad tracks, currently the bike path, or what I would call the bridge because the bridge over the railroad tracks and one the roads on the other side of the uh, tracks. Um, so as we go in, uh, second as the road, I try to remember which ones are on my right and which ones are on my left. And on the right, the first road on the right, um, when you're on um, the 28A side of the uh, railroad, of the bridge there, is the first one on the right is Daniels Road, okay? And Daniels goes to Bob White and to this little road here called Paul's Hill. And Paul's Hill really is just this one house right on the corner. That's the only address to it. It does not cut through, so don't try to go through. Um, and as we go down, our next road on the right before the bridge will be Bumblebee Hill Road and Periwig Lane, okay? And once again, these do not connect. At one time they probably did, but now they don't. Um, and then we go on the left and we come to Barnabas and uh, 
Maltaya and Barnabas again. Now even though on paper it shows Antioch coming in here, it does not. Uh, that is not our first row on the left. So hopefully dispatchers won't give any instructions to be that way. Um, but that's the way it is. Uh, Barnabas comes in and runs around like this and it intersects Maltaya and Antioch. And uh, we all think of Sacanesset Hills of having uh, big houses, and indeed, sometimes they are. Uh, but in some cases, they are not. And I believe this house here is just a typical, you know, typical cape. It's been, it looks like it's been there for a little while, even though it's been recently landscaped. Just a typical cape, no, uh, you know, no garage or anything else. So it's probably uh, you know 1,500 square foot uh, cape. So now we go to the other side of the bridge. We once again look. I, I think of things on the right hand side, and uh, this is another way I tried to remember these. Um, and maybe you'll find your own way to remember them, is it a little bit of Falmouth history I mentioned before um, might help out here because our first road on the right is Arnold Gifford Road. And we think of the original settlers of Falmouth. We talked about the Barman House, the Barmans and Giffords. Now we're that family that owned that house. We have Arnold Gifford and who else was around at that time was the Native Americans. So we have Peace Pipe, uh, Tupelo, and Wigwam are these uh, Indian names in here. Uh, and then we have Indian Ridge. And then we have uh, another old time uh, name, Salt Works Way. One's around here. So that's how. I remember them. Now, at the end of uh, Second Essex Road down in here, uh, I will just go into these last two uh, photographs here uh, just to show some of the houses here. This is a house where at the end of Second Essex Road overlooking uh, the beach in Buzzards Bay. And it looks to be a good, you know, six to eight thousand square foot house. This has recently been built, probably within the past five years, so you know, good construction, but pretty substantial uh, property. And then I believe the final uh, photograph is of another house in Second Essex. Okay, so this isn't too much, you know, Gambrell uh, with a two car garage. Nothing spectacular, but in comparison, this is probably 1,500, 1,800, and the other one's 6,000 square feet. But all single-family dwellings. And and then uh, that's on the right-hand side. There's more roads on the right than there are in the left um, as we get over the railroad tracks. And the other thing we're looking at is Arnold Gifford. So an Arnold Gifford is the, the first road you come to as you come over the bridge and it either goes left or right. On the left, you have um, the lower numbers, and to the right, you have the higher numbers on Arnold Gifford. And now the other thing is in here, this is where dispatchers really have to be keen on these maps, is even on paper, it shows these connect. It does not, okay? And then this section over here is Arnold Gifford Road as well. So we have to keep in mind um, how, you know, that it is cutting off. This is Arnold Gifford as well as the other section, and there's no way to get from one to the other. Same thing as Salt Works. You can't get through this little section of Salt Works here. You have to go Indian Ridge, Arnold Gifford, and down Salt Works kind of comes in and kind of peter over here. So that is kind of a long review of that um, I'm well just to finish up and review I know this is getting kind of long here but we're talking about West Falmouth's uh, Main Street the southern section of it just a way to remember that 
Um, we're talking about uh, about 250 houses. 100 of them are in Sacanasset Hills, the rest of them outside. So we're talking well over 500 residents. Um, somewhat seasonal. Sacanasset Hills is, is seasonal, but it's becoming more and more year-round. Uh, the house size is 800 to 8,000 square foot, so we certainly do have a broad range. But predominantly, as we mentioned before, because of the zoning and so forth, that it's single-family um, dwellings. There's only uh, two multi-families. They're uh, also uh, wood frame dwellings. Uh, no condo, no businesses, except for the post office square and the Chappaquake Grill. Uh, roads, uh, we've kind of gone over uh, each of the roads in the network. Uh, this is how I divided them up uh, before the second answer goes all the way down, before the bridge, after the bridge, uh, on the right and on the left. Uh, we talk about the campgrounds, having a Knox box, Cashelot Lane, um, and the West Falmouth Highway uh, 110 to 126. Those are the ones off of that uh, kind of bypass uh, road there. Our hazards in that area, um, obviously single family dwellings, and multi family dwellings, a couple of them. Uh, the campground, probably look at uh, LP tanks, campers. Um, and so forth, uh, Post Office Square, uh, Peachtree Circle. I mentioned that only because of uh, the possibility of having agricultural products there. Um, you know, pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, so forth. Uh, and also, they do have a little, re uh, little small restaurant there. Uh, the response, as we see here, is uh, pretty self explanatory. Uh, Station 4, one, you know, Engine 21 second do district obviously and the response times uh, this is to an area this is to I believe uh, 98 or 78 um, Island Gifford Road way down deep and this is way down deep into second Acid Hills so it's only 2.2 miles from station 4 and 3.7 from station one, it's only a mile uh, further away. Um, so hence the uh, two minutes difference. And I would imagine because headquarters usually gets a jump on the 911 call that uh, they probably should be arriving at just about the same time. Uh, the other engine do uh, is 6.1 mile station 3, about 10 minutes away. Uh, then if we have one of those busy, then we have to go elsewhere. And uh, we're looking at uh, five and a half to six and a half miles away. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know if this is going to come up here. But just the uh, finalizing, that's what we are focusing on today, uh, is this area here of West Falmouth. And uh, once again, this is kind of hard to read, it just shows the district. Um, this is the, uh, you know, it's interesting just to see the, the way the uh, zoning is set up here. This is just the only business area here in, uh, in this area. That's the way the town deems it to be. So, with uh, that being said, uh, we will finish up and we'll move on later to another area of town. In the meantime, be safe and eat healthy.